I picked up this little saying by Arnold Bennett on time. Time is the inexplicable raw material of everything. With it, all is possible. Without it, nothing. The supply of time is truly a daily miracle, an affair genuinely astonishing when one examines it. You wake up in the morning and lo, your purse is magically filled with 24 hours of the unmanufactured tissue of the universe of your life. It is yours. It is the most precious of possessions. No one can take it from you. It is unstealable. And no one receives either more or less than you receive. In the realm of time, there is no aristocracy of wealth and no aristocracy of intellect. Genius is never rewarded by even an extra hour a day. And there is no punishment. Waste your infinitely previous commodity as much as you will, and the supply will never be withheld from you. Moreover, you cannot draw on the future. Impossible to get into debt, you can only waste the passing moment. You cannot waste tomorrow. It is kept for you. You cannot waste the next hour. It is kept for you. I have said the affair was a genuine miracle. Is it not? You have to live on this 24 hours of daily time. Out of it, you have to spend health, pleasure, money, content, respect, and the evolution of your immortal soul. Its right use, its most effective use, is a matter of the highest urgency and of the most thrilling actuality. All depends on that. Your happiness, the elusive prize that you are all clutching for, my friends, depends on that. If one cannot arrange that an income of 24 hours shall exactly cover all proper items of expenditure, one does muddle one's whole life indefinitely. We shall never have any more time. We have, and we have always had, all the time there is. Arnold Bennett. Let me give you just a few tips on time management essentials. First of all, you run the day or it runs you. A little simple analysis. It's not that difficult to get something started and you run it for a while and after a while it starts running you. That's part of the challenge. I told my staff one day, giving birth to a tiger is one thing, learning how to ride it is something else, right? <laughs> Sometimes you start it and then it turns around and starts giving you all kinds of trouble. Next, the time you've already committed to labor is enough time. If you're working already eight, ten hours a day, that's about it. You just can't work much more than that. Uh, bursts at a time, you can work 12, 14, 16, right? And I'm sure we've all learned to do that, put in the extra time. But after a while, you pretty well have to put your life in balance or your health is in jeopardy and your heart's in jeopardy, your blood pressure is in jeopardy, a lot of things uh, if you don't stay in balance. So you don't have to put in any more hours, probably. All you have to do is just make better use of the hours. A cliche we've all heard, it's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours that counts. Now also you need a written set of goals, time management essential, and a constant review of your goals, because that's how you determine how to use your time, whatever priorities you're going for. Then you need a plan to achieve your goals. Next time management essential is concentration, zeroing in, preoccupation is fatal, both on the freeway and in business. You got to keep your mind concentrated I have a little rule that says, don't start the business day till you get to the office. I used to start my business day in the shower or at the breakfast table, and it just messed up a lot of things. I'm sitting at the breakfast table, guess where my mind is? At the office. I even got mixed up going to the beach and, you know, trying to, you know, do some relaxing time. But sure enough, when I'm in the office, I'm uh, thinking about the beach. And when I'm on the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. Now, see, that's mixed up. We quoted that little quote from the Reader's Digest in the evening seminar, right? Wherever you are, be there. If you're at the breakfast table, be there. When you're having a conversation with somebody, be there. 
when you're on your way to work. Be there. Enjoy the ride. Take a look around you. What's going on? Study human nature. What's happening? You know, be there. And then when you get to the office, you know, go for it. Next time management essential is learn to say no. Boy, it's easy to overload your calendar, get yourself into all kinds of time management problems simply because you didn't have the, the strength to say no when you should have said no. It's much more difficult to say no and then try to get out of it later, call back, make the arrangements, uh, you know, go through the whole embarrassment. Better to say no than to say yes and have to back out. Ron Reynolds has a good phrase that says, don't let your mouth overload your back. That's good. The next time management essential is when you work, work, when you play, play. That one I learned the hard way. See, if you're going to put in a day, just put in the whole day. And if you're going to take some time off, take it all off. Right? Take the whole day off. If you're going to work a day, work a good, long, hard day. If you're going to play, play, play all day. Either work all day or play all day. Because guess what, if you're going to knock off at 3 and go play, guess what you're thinking about all morning, right? Knocking off at 3 o'clock. I mean, it just, you know, it's one of those things. You just, it's hard to zero in, you know, on something and make it productive if you're making plans to do something else. Now, part of this depends on what you do and depends on your work schedule and the job you have and the business you have, right? I understand that. Everything we're talking about these two days needs to be altered and monitored and and, and worked around to fit your particular situation. I understand that. I have a builder friend of mine up in San Jose. His name is Peter Paulson. Uh, Peter's got it down pat. Peter works a week and takes off a week. That's the way he's got it arranged. He's a builder. Now, it's kind of clever, though. See, he works five days, takes off nine. <laughs> That's a little... He says work a week, take off a week, yeah, but it's really five and nine. Because it's five, and then it's a weekend, and five days, and another weekend, right? So, uh, but what Peter does, the five days he puts in, he works, you know, 14, 16 hours, almost around the clock, keeps two or three secretaries going, gives all the orders, the accountants, the superintendents, the builders, the whole thing, gets it all arranged, and works around the clock for five days, and then goes, takes off. Now, you know, you might not have the luxury of being able to uh, do it that way, but... Uh, just work on this when you work, work, when you play, play. Okay, the next time management essential is analyze how you are and then either compensate for it or change. Sometimes you can remain how you are if you just make other arrangements. My staff discovered I'm a poor courier. They said, Mr. Owen, here's a check for Jerry Haynes. You're going to be up north, right, in the next couple of days? I said, yeah, no problem. Give it to me. I'll see that he gets it. Guess when I next hear about that check? From my cleaners. <laughs> Saying, Mr. Rohn, we found this, right? Now, I say, look, I know I messed up that time, but, you know, next time I'll make sure, see, but it just doesn't work. I'm not good at it. So we've got a little rule at our office that says, don't give the chairman anything, right? <laughs> don't. It won't arrive. <laughs> You know, he can talk good, but he's a poor courier. He, it won't get there. So you just got to analyze how you are and then make the compensations for it. Now, you can promise to change all you want, right? But if you're not going to, then make the other arrangements. I finally got somebody to help take care of reading financial statements and taking care of, you know, a lot of corporate business and matters that I promised I would do myself, but I just never did get it done. And it used to be terribly costly to me for IRS and taxes. Unbelievable. But I finally got somebody to take care of that. At first it was Miss Mary. Ron Reynolds now handles a lot of it. But Mary Nasarowicz, back in those other years, she did it for me. I found her. She's a legal secretary and had a real estate license. And, uh, and uh, she was just terribly bright, has my power of attorney, bought and sold property, did a lot of these things. Argues with attorneys and sits down with the accountants and goes through stuff with the IRS. And uh, she just got good at it. And uh, she took care of a lot of things that uh, bailed me out more than once. IRS says I owe them an extra 105000 one year. I said, 105000 They said, yes, all these bank accounts and things we can't reconcile. Sure enough, back in the old days, I'd have paid the one hundred five. This time I say, Mary, 
<laughs> so Mary puts all this stuff together. I think she, she made one trip to Texas, one trip to Florida, gathered up all this information, and she had done such a good job that uh, now it's time to go to San Francisco, meet the IRS with the accountants and the attorneys and, you know, one of those sessions. And Miss Mary had done such a good job that when she finished, after about a three-hour presentation, IRS said, Mr. Rohn, fortunate for you, we will strike the 105. <laughs> wow, Miss Mary gets a bonus, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Incredible. So if you're not going to change, see, if you're not going to do it, even though you promise yourself year after year, just then make arrangements to see that it gets done. So analyze how you are. You know, if you're good at bookkeeping, then keep your books. If you're not, just don't keep promising. Just drop off all that mess, you know, twice a week or once a month in somebody's lap and say, here, figure this out and I'll pay you to do it. Sometimes for 100 a month or something, $50 a month, somebody will just, you know, calculate a lot of stuff for you. Just save yourself all the grief of promising, promising and never doing it. So analyze how you are. That's very important. Next time management essential is beware of the telephone. Beware of the telephone, a useful tool, but it can also get you into trouble. We got a little careless one time for a period of time. The telephone bill got up to 12000 a month. In California, I mean, that wasn't international. That was here. Unbelievable. So uh, you got to watch the telephone. And also you got to watch the telephone on time management. Here's one way to use the telephone. Make sure you make an agenda before you make a call. Make a little list of what you're going to talk about before you call. Don't try to think and, and call out of your head. We've learned to do this international. When you're in South Africa talking to uh, Italy, you've got to have an agenda. Otherwise, the phone bill goes crazy. And when you talk to any of our guys right around the world, you can just hear them kind of going through this list. Tick, 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 tick. You know, how are you and how are the kids and how are you doing, right? A few little pleasantries. Here's what I want to talk to you about. Tick, 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 right down through it. Wind up saying, hey, hope to see you very soon. Boom. But if you don't have this agenda, you, you wander around, wander around, talk about all kinds of things that probably aren't essential. And then you have that at the end of the telephone conversation. You say, let's see, there was something else I was going to talk to you about. I can't think of it right now. If I think of it, I'll call you back. See, you just, great time waster. Also, when you make an agenda, it's really great when you come back to recall the conversation. Remember we talked about doing these three things? You say, no, we didn't go over that. Say, well, let me see. Oh, yeah. There it is in my log, the agenda of the, co of the telephone conversation. Okay? So use the telephone. Now, you've got to be aware of the telephone at home, too. Now, you might have to have some business calls at home, but you've got to be very careful. The phone can be an incredibly disturbing influence on family and social, personal life. So learn to regulate that. They got the phones now, you can just shut them off, right? When somebody calls, it just sounds like you're not there. You know, the phone just rings, but you don't hear it. Uh, I can just let the phone ring, but some people can't do that, right? They, I've had people over at my house, my phone rings. I say, they say, aren't you going to answer your phone? I say, no, we're having lunch or whatever, right? So you've got to answer your phone. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> I've had them go answer my phones. They say, it's for you. I said, I imagine it is, yeah. Come on. Next. Time management is essential is uh, have a certain time to solve problems. We found that helpful, especially in, in the business world. We say problems after three. Just set them aside. Now, you don't ignore them, but you just set them aside in a certain time frame. All the problem calls, you just call back after 3 o'clock and just go right through them. Now, also, in setting them aside till 3 o'clock, problem comes in at 9 o'clock. And you say, hey, 3 o'clock, Mr. Rohn's going to get on the phone and make all these problem calls, right? Call back all these answers. Guess what usually happens between 9 and 3? Somebody calls back and says, hey, tell him not to call. We've already got it worked out. But see, if you take that call when it comes, sure enough, now you've got to spend time, spend time. We learn in sales training. People all ask questions, ask questions. You say, hey, save that till training class. Bring that question to training class. You just learn those time-saving things so you don't have to cover the same things with each person. Okay. Next time management essential is be more alert. 
part of the alertness is not only what's going on, but also be alert to looking at all your present procedures. You may have some old outdated procedures, stuff you've been doing for five years and it's taken 10 hours instead of one, right? You could put it on a computer or something. You could just, you know, go through because it's easy to just accumulate a lot of wasted time, wasted motion by not, you know, updating all of your stuff. You know, you don't have to use the old t -t 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 -t. You know, you don't have to use that anymore, right? The old uh, calculators. They got the neat, easy stuff, right? Just go through and make sure you're not bogged down with some old, antiquated stuff that's wasting a lot of time. And then be more alert. Take a look at what's going around you. Say, hey, I've been going from here to there and it's taking too much time. In sales management, we teach. Don't go across town until you've gone across the street. Have they heard your story across the street? Guys, I got this hot prospect 40 miles away. <laughs> it just probably isn't worth the time. It's too far. You know, the, the span of distance is too long. Just shorten up the span. So be alert as to those kind of time wasters. The last one here is ask questions. When you get ready to talk to somebody, ask some questions. It might save you a great deal of time. Because it's easy to talk to somebody for an hour and then discover you've been on the wrong subject. Or maybe you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> Say, who are you? Oh, yeah, John, I forgot. You're talking about somebody else's problem. No, ask questions. You know, then you can get right to the heart of the matter. And then after you've asked a couple of questions, ask a couple of more. Because you can ask somebody, hey, what's wrong? It's not going well, what's wrong? Guy says, well, I can't seem to get at it. And then you just go on, here's how you ought to get at it, and so on, when that's not really the problem. Most people at first don't disclose the real problem. Make sure you learn that in management. Most people at first don't disclose the real problem. They disclose the surface problem. Sometimes the real problem is the problem. Guy says, well, I got some problems at home. Said, oh, that's why you're not getting out there. I've been talking about hitting it when the real problem is something's wrong at home. Let's talk about that. See, just a couple of questions and you just save yourself an hour. You save yourself talking too long about the wrong things just by asking the questions. 